government schemes. Eleven years spent to dig out ditches, forget your school day dream. Benefit spending is an unusually difficult budget line to control. Whoever wins the election will need to contend with this extremely unpredictable cost. Now, the coalition says it saves £21 billion a year through its changes. But what's actually been happening? To listen to our politicians, you'd think that the whole issue around welfare was around a few small neighbourhoods with high unemployment, places like Ladywood here in Birmingham, where workless people were soaking up huge amounts of cash. Ladywood was the site of a Channel 4 documentary about working age benefit recipients, which helped set that tone. Benefit Street epitomised how welfare is often portrayed. So I've been knocking on doors here to try and find out what exactly people think about their portrayal a year on. And two things are very striking. First of all, we knocked on a lot of doors and almost no one answered. It's the middle of the working day, so they're either out at work or they're very keen not to talk to us. And that's possible because the second thing we've observed is the people who will speak are very angry. One lady told us here about how she had had abuse shouted at her in the street just for living here, and she's very worried she won't be able to sell her house. Furthermore, the Benefit Street view misses the big picture on benefits. You can think of the combination of taxes and benefits as doing two different things. One is a Robin Hood function, which is people who've got higher incomes pay in more, people who've got low incomes get more out at that particular moment. But the majority of what it does is like being a giant piggy bank that we pay in through our working lives, through our taxes, income tax and national insurance, and we get out mainly after retirement, but also like an insurance company when things go wrong for us. So where do we spend the bulk of our £200 billion plus benefit bill? Well, helping with the cost of children, that's £37 billion. Helping people on low incomes, £34 billion. People with illnesses and disabilities, £36 billion. Unemployed people, £4.5 billion. And benefits for older people, £93 billion. But cuts haven't fallen evenly. We have the famous triple lock for pensioners where your state pension goes up by the best of earnings prices or two and a half percent. Whereas the tone of discussion for the working age population is that if, the work, if, if, if wages fell, then so should your benefits. Now, benefits didn't rise when, when wages were rising in real terms. So it's almost turning to the working age population and say, you'll get the worst of prices and earnings. So, for example, benefits aimed at working age people are cut by the equivalent of £5.3 billion this year alone by making payments less generous than they otherwise would have been. Similarly, child benefit restrictions and cuts saved £3.7 billion a year. Pensions and pension credit payments, however, were made a billion pounds a year more generous. Over this parliament, we've seen big changes to the benefit system for working people. In housing benefit, for example, it's become less generous, and in tax credits, we're seeing that people are able to get less support when they're on a low income. And those policy changes also um, need to be considered in the context of bigger changes in the labour market. We've seen a growth of self-employment, we've seen more agency work, shift work, zero hours contracts. And in the housing market, we've seen pressure on the private rented sector, rents going up. So the people who we see at Citizens advice is struggling with a combination of these problems. Now those labour market changes drove a surprising fall in job seekers allowance claims, saving an unexpected £326 million in 2014-15. But high house prices drove the housing benefit bill up by £3 billion more than expected, to £24.5 billion overall. The coalition also sought to get people off sickness benefits, like incapacity benefit, and into work. The work capability assessment was really an attempt by the government to work out whether in fact people were capable of work and if they weren't, whether with help they would be capable of work. So that should in the end mean that more people would be in work because the assessment would be fairer for everybody and you wouldn't have people languishing on support. But look at these graphs showing projections for the cost of incapacity benefits. In 2011 the bill was projected to start falling imminently and in 2012, and in 2013, but it hasn't. Here is the latest forecast. The coalition is three billion pounds a year off its original target to cut the cost of IB to under 10 billion pounds. When I was brought in as the first independent reviewer, it seemed to me that though the process, the principle behind the process was correct, 
There was something wrong with every step of the process, right the way from the first telephone call to the claimant, right through, if necessary, to appeal. And it was mechanistic. It was driven by the fact that they thought this computer program would solve all their problems and you wouldn't have to involve too many human beings in it. And yet you were dealing with human beings and they're individually different. And it just seemed to me it would, it would lost all humanity. The Labour Shadow Chief Secretary, Rachel Reeves, caused quite a stir when she said, we are not the party of people on benefits. So is Labour still the workers' party? There seems to be this, this resistance to, uh, uh, amongst Labour to uh, embrace, properly embrace working people. Union is a filthy word in this country. Your newspaper has done massive, massive harm where that's concerned. The, the idea of the welfare state, of people on unemployment benefit and so on, was right there in the building of Labour as a party mm -hmm. and as a brand. Mm -hmm. And more recently there's been a discussion within the party about whether they become to be seen too much as the party of benefits and not enough about, uh, about as the party of kind of people in employment and working. Yeah. Do you recognise that in any way? Do you think that's an issue? Do you think they could have done more to... I think compared to the all-out assault uh, that the coalition have launched against uh, low-earning people and people who are unemployed, yeah, I'm sure the Labour Party do look like that. But, I mean, the, the, the blame following the financial crash has been laid very squarely uh, on the shoulders of the poorest and most vulnerable people by the press and by far too many of our politicians. And I don't understand why the arguments that say that those most vulnerable people who did not cause these problems uh, should be helped as much as possible. I, I, I'm astonished but that that rhetoric hasn't gained more traction. Jane, is Labour still a party of working people? Um, yes, I think, I, I think that's true. I mean, it kind of, the, the kind of definition of, of it all I think has changed over the years. I mean, I, I know we talk about working people rather than working class people because I think we're still very class obsessed in, in this country in a way that the rest of the world isn't and we kind of like to label people and say you're this and you're that and you're in that category and you're in that category. And, but I, I, I do sort of think that uh, I've been to a lot of the areas that, that mm. you talk about as well and I have to say when I've been to a couple of them I've actually been shocked by the level of unemployment and despair and these people they want to work so you know people on benefits get a lot of bad stick from from all sec sections of society as being lazy and this that and the other and you know what yes there are probably some people that prefer to be on benefits but there's a whole raft now and this is where I think the Labour Party have got it wrong in that maybe they have created a benefit culture of people that can't actually get themselves out of that situation because the opportunities aren't there and so therefore it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that they they kind of just descend into you know the depression and the anxiety that that, that we're seeing more and more doctors signing people off for and it, it you know, people want to work, they want to feel the pride of having that pay packet in their hand that they've earned themselves. And now I think that is increasingly difficult to do in this country. And I think that's the fault of all parties. I don't particularly lay the blame for it at any, at any door. But I, I don't think Labour is quite differentiating itself enough from the coalition at the moment for those people. Now, welfare has always been an emotive subject. False claims, unfair assessments, controversial reforms, all adding to the toxic mix of the arguments swirling around. But tonight, we report on some of its casualties, people for whom it may have been too much to bear. The Department of Work and Pensions does not keep a record of how many people take their own lives because of welfare rulings, but it does admit to carrying out 40 reviews since 2012 in connection with suicides. Kieran Jenkins has the story of two claimants. This is Julia Kelly, long before the two car accidents that changed her life. But you're so naughty. Julia's future would be chronic pain and reliance on benefits. She took her own life in November last year. We know it wasn't easy for Julia because she said so. She headed her own charity and she spoke of her fight to get the benefits she believed she deserved. 
even though I had overwhelming medical evidence, you know, you're having to go through tribunals, you know, with guardian, obviously even ESA, and it, that, that just, just that stress on top of everything else that you're going through, um, it, it, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's almost enough to make you crack. This one is of Julia um, a month before she died. In her final weeks, Julia was in pain. Her father suspects she was depressed. She'd also received letters from the Department for Work and Pensions asking her to repay benefits she'd claimed. Dear Miss Kelly, the heading we are contacting you. I'm conducting an investigation into alleged criminal offences in relation to a claim to benefit. This is a very serious matter which I need to discuss with you urgently. How do you think she would have felt then reading this? She was absolutely petrified. Last week, a coroner recorded a verdict of suicide. The coroner said upset caused by the potential withdrawal of her benefits had been the trigger for Julia to end her life. I feel um, obviously um, bitter that we don't have Julia anymore and perhaps the reason that she finally did it um, perhaps could have been avoided. We could have never cured the pain, but I think that the way the letters were sent, the way the whole matter was handled by the authorities could have been treated in a different, in a different way. I believe as a society, we must have a responsibility to vulnerable people. A spokesman at the DWP said their thoughts were with Julia's family, but they said employment support allowance, which Julia claimed, was means tested, and if someone has sufficient savings, they may no longer be entitled to it. Want dinner? Hey, we want. There can, though, be many reasons for a suicide, and families can never know for sure what they were. You enjoying that, are you? Dave West, however, has survived to tell his story. A letter had come that day, because there seemed to be letters come nearly every day, and every time a letter come, it got worse. What the letters were saying back in April 2013 was that Dave's housing benefit was being reduced, his incapacity benefit cut. Despite diabetes and depression, Dave had been found fit to work. I was left with um, roughly a pound a day to live on after I paid my bills and that was a pound for food, clothes, travel, and it cost three pounds something to get to the doctors. So I just, I couldn't cope, I couldn't, um, I knew that I couldn't live like that. Dave tried twice that month to take his own life. I knew I wasn't fit for work, um, my finances were being squeezed, I was losing my home where I brought up uh, six children. It was like shifting sands, everything just moved. It was like having a rug pulled out from under your feet. The Department for Work and Pensions confirmed Dave's appeal was eventually successful. He's been receiving employment support allowance ever since. What we don't know is just how many benefits claimants have taken their own lives, because the DWP isn't counting. What they have done, though, is to review some of these cases. 49 reviews, in fact, since 2012. 40 of them have been suicides. And in 30 of these reviews, there have been calls for improvements within the DWP. What they won't do, though, is make any of those details public. Campaigners aren't happy, but the DWP says publishing its recommendations would be inappropriate because they contain extremely personal information. The Department of Work and Pensions say these details, they're private. The Department of Work and Pensions should be open and transparent about the findings from the benefit-related inquiries they've carried out in the last three years. It is in the public interest that the information be released. In the absence of these reviews, though, mental health charities have their own thoughts about how the government should communicate with vulnerable people. If in the end somebody receives a letter out of the blue and it causes them huge anxiety, and they lose their benefits and they become more unwell or in tragic cases take their own lives, then there is no economic sense in that at all. So I think a much more sensible understanding tone, which begins with recognising that they have an illness but they want to go back to work, is, is the key. Oh, cheers. Who knows whether heeding this advice would save any lives. What the family of Julia Kelly say, though, is that it's surely worth a try. There'll be no money if you dare to question work in the Tory way The truth is that they're carved in stone, we're 21 dead now they I found this last for